Press the record button, please. <laughs> right, thank you very much. Right, good afternoon, everyone, and can I welcome you to the planning committee meeting. I'm assuming we've taken the apologies for absence, so um, I'm assuming, Janet, that the order of business is as per the order paper? Yes, as per the agenda. OK, thank you very much. Uh, that brings us on to item three, which is declarations of interest. Is there anybody got any interest to declare? Reminding each other that we can declare at the appropriate time, if you recall that you have to do care. OK, I'm not getting anything from there, so we'll just quickly uh, move on. That brings us on to the minutes of the last meeting, which have been circulated. Um, we haven't heard anything back, so I'm assuming these minutes are in order. Unless anybody else is otherwise minded, uh, we'll just move on with the minutes. That then brings us on to the public reports, uh, which again, um, will take each report as read and members can, uh, can uh, re re request by indication if you want to ask any questions on these particular reports. Uh, first of all, that's 5.1, which is the Mavis Bank Conservation Area Character Appraisal and Management Plan. That's back up in front of us. Is there anybody got anything that they wish to comment on? OK, so we'll just take that as read. And Peter, that means that we can crack on with it. Peter, Peter Arsdorf, that is. Yes, thank you, Chair. OK, right, fine. 5.2, the next item is the pre-application consultation for a mixed-use development comprising of classes 4, 5 and 6 at land east of Salters Road, Adal Keith. Is there any member want to say anything at this juncture regarding the pre-application? No. Oops. Councillor Hackett. Thank you, Chair. It's partly picked up in the report, but just being mindful um, of the fact that it's near the school and that will become an increasingly busy road uh, with some of the other developments around Shore Fair and East Lothian. Um, and I'm also mindful, I don't know how much this has to do directly with the application, but I've had issues expressed to me about the safety of people coming on to the uh, A68 in that area and with increasing truck traffic, etc. Um, I'm not sure if, as I say, through this application, if that could be picked up or representations made to Transport Scotland about potential improvements um, to the A68 bypass. Thank you, Chair. Yeah, Peter. Thank you, Chair. Yeah, if an application materialises on the, the back of this pre-application consultation, we would expect to see a transport assessment as part of that package, which will look at how the traffic operates from the site and in relation to those immediate junctions so that's a valid point chair we can take that away and that will be picked up as part of the the planning process in theory we would hope that development would take place and use the a68 junction so hopefully that doesn't conflict with the school going in the other direction but like i say we would assess that in detail as any part of planning application okay thank you satisfied council hackett good council smell Yes, I've also had representations that the, cu the current site has a number of in informal paths that are used by by children and the feeling is that these are going to be compromised by the the use that's proposed. So perhaps some attention could be given to the coexistence of, of paths uh, f for pedestrian use. Uh, also, in that connection, you're probably aware that uh, on the Salters Road, all the uh, gates into the uh, Delkey Palace estate have been blocked up for m many years and the last time this site was considered there was uh, some informal discussion of whether those could be reopened and therefore create a safe route into Dalkeith through the palace as distinct from the very busy road there. And it's possible that could those discussions could be uh, taken up again um, with the uh, with the owners of the land. Thank you. Over to you again, Peter. Thanks, Chair. In terms of the first point, yeah, there is a right of access across the site, Chair. In previous discussions, we've spoke with the, the landholders about 
redirecting that around the edge of the site or safely through the development depends how it's designed so we won't lose sight of that we will make sure that's that's picked up and the second point chair yeah we'll, we'll take that away and speak to to the it's the same land owners who own the park so we can pick up the sort of access issue as well so that's not a problem take that away thank you thank you very much okay council smell thank you okay right thanks is there any further questions on this? Okay, we'll just take that as our comments on the pre-application and we'll see where it where it takes us in the future. That then brings us on to 5.3, which is the application for planning permission in principle for residential development and associated works at land north of Seafield Road, Bilson. Again, the report has been circulated. Is there any members have any questions? No. Oh, oh sorry, Councillor Hackett. Sorry, I should have said, has anybody got any questions apart from Councillor Hackett? <laughs> no worries. Thank you, Chair. Um, so I can't help but comment on the impact of local health services and concerns I've raised previously about the funding models that are used to fund services in Midlothian, particularly from the Scottish Government. And I know Chair and uh, uh, the officers will tell me that might not in itself be a planning matter, but as I say, I, I can't help but raise it at uh, every opportunity we have when we have big developments like this. Thank you. Oh, thanks. I think it's a, it's a, it's a concern to each and every councillor right throughout Midlothian uh, with regard to health services in particular, and way up there is infrastructure as well. We just aren't keeping up with the, the pace of development and it's not for a small council or a, even a medium or a large council to actually have the ability to, to meet the infrastructure and health, and, oops, and health requirements. So uh, from that perspective, I uh, couldn't agree with you more, Councillor Hackett, uh, but I think it's people on a higher pay grade than, than all of us around here that will have to... Uh, have the ability to change it. It may be something again now that our MSPs are, are are back in the Parliament that we get the two certainly the two local MSPs that cover Midlothian maybe invite them to to, to talk about how they can help us and try and make that step change so that we can satisfy our constituents, which of course are their constituents as well. Okay, so it's it's well noted. Right, so there's nothing more on that. So that uh, goes through. The next one is 5.4, which is the Section 42 application uh, down at uh, Drummond Moor Landfill site at Rosewell. Again, the report's been circulated, uh, recommended for uh, approval, and uh, again, open up to any questions members may have. Okay, that's fine with that one. Still staying in the same place, but along a little bit, uh, is the application for the erection of 64 holiday lodges uh, and the reception and amenity building and associated land at Drummond Muir Rosewell. Again, report has been circulated and it's recommended uh, for approval, Councillor Hackett. Thank you, Chair. <laughs> I'm just mindful since uh, being a member of this committee that we've had a number of applications come forward for tourist accommodation, and this is another one, um, which I have to say I probably welcome in reading the report. But uh, a question for Mr. Arnsdorf. Um, in light of this application and, and some previous <coughs> others, and hopefully, um, well, not hopefully, but you know, I'm, I'm going to assume more to come, is there anything that we should be considering as part of our next local development plan that might require different infrastructure improvements to accommodate an increasing tourism uh, sector. Thank you. Question, Peter. Thank you, Chair. Yeah, I, I mean, the current local development plan does support the provision of tourist accommodation and tourist activities, hence the recommendation here for, for approval. Um, so we are mindful that that's an important sector, so we will incorporate policies in favour of that in the next local plan, obviously subject to to go through the elected members. I think the issue often seems to be just the delivery. As Councillor Hackett uh, reminded us, we've had a number of these sort of projects which we often are supportive of. It's just that sometimes they just don't materialise on the ground. 
in this case, I'm quite optimistic it might be different because the, the operator is a very much established operator who has done this sort of project before, especially south of the border. So they've done the number crunching and the rationale. There's clearly a market for it, and most probably what we've all experienced in the last 18 months is sort of more of a market for these, these projects at home. So I'm optimistic that this one will be delivered, but in terms of going forward, Chair, we're just definitely open to support and encouraging tourist operations in Midlothian, um, both in the rural areas and urban areas. And again, just noting that, uh, you know, there's there's going to be extra demand on infrastructure and we're going to have to keep that under under consideration as we go forward. So, OK, on that one, anybody else? No. OK, that then takes us on to 5.6, which has been a call in. Uh, it's a subdivision of a house up at Main Street Path Head. Again, the report has been circulated. Um, can invite uh, Councillor Smell to perhaps uh, discuss this. Yeah, th thank you very much. Uh, th we're in the territory of uh, a listed house in a conservation village, and those of you who know Pathhead, John, very well, I uh, know that the, I mean, one of the delights of Pathhead is the variegated uh, nature of the, of, of, of the cottage facades and these lovely pantile roofs. Uh, around the back, uh, which is, is what this is about, isn't so great. Uh, but what's happening here is the treatment for the house that looks very smart and would be great uh, in, in uh, some sort of executive development. Uh, it would uh, even be in a, a Malibu beach, a beach house would, would not be ashamed of, of this facade. But it does look completely out of keeping with the front of the building. So this property is going to have a sort of split personality. And it also makes it, I think, to the eye worse that it is aggressively symmetrical, which is not the nature of, of, of Pathhead. Everything has grown. Uh, I think the word is like a palimpsest being written on over and over again with, with different traditional materials. Uh, there are other issues here. Um, you are actually demolishing a wall that is made of traditional uh, materials, which surrounds the existing garage. I think four cars in the back is a bit too much. Uh, if you turn right to get into this, you're going to block the... A68, which has got more traffic than the A9. So I would be inclined to say to, to the architect, you know, good try. Could you come back with maybe two car parking spaces? And there's, there is car parking on the street, which actually helps slow the traffic down. And could you come back with uh, an extension and subdivision using tradition, more traditional materials uh, for, for us to look at? Uh, most of most of what I'm trying to say is, is much better put by the Architectural Heritage Society in, the, in their uh, statement. OK, thank you very much indeed, uh, Councillor Smale. Um, Peter, do you want to just respond to some of the comments that have been made there? Yeah, thank you, Chair. I think it's maybe worth me setting out this sort of position in general terms when it comes to looking at developments, not just in conservation areas, but in this case also associated with to the, the listed building. And the, the position is, and this is the position set out in terms of the national position set out by the guidance by Historic Environment Scotland, set out by ourselves in terms of policy, which is we're all aiming for the same, um, the same aspiration here, which is to protect and positively manage conservation areas listed buildings. And that protect and enhancement of those, uh, those structures and conservation areas is important, but that obviously doesn't mean that's a no to any form of development. And I think there is a consensus that is most probably um, the principle of an extension to this building is acceptable. Councillor Smell kindly referenced that it's it's actually the design of the extension is a good one. So the question is, is it the right extension on the right building at the right place? Now, the guidance, and I, I tend to agree this is a planning prof uh, professional is that the guidance says you don't always have to go for a replica, a pastiche extension on a listed building or in a conservation area. There's a very much a uh, an emphasis on trying to enable you to read structures in conservation areas so you do see the difference between the old building and the, the new extension. That's very, very much a a position which Historic Scotland supports and encourages councils to take. So that's what we've we've done here. This is, in our, my view, a good opportunity because it's around the back 
from the street, which is the, the main street through Pathhead. The conservation area runs along that main, main road. It's got a lot of traditional style buildings of different sizes, um, of different periods. But actually, if you then turn and face this structure, with, with the exception of the additional door going in the front elevation, you don't effectively see this modern extension at the back. It sits below the ridge height of the existing dwelling. And it also indents in from the gables. So even when you go to the side, you won't be overwhelmed by the, the size of the extension. So I would say in terms of its size and location, it's very, very discreet. So you're then making a judgment about whether modern design, modern materials are acceptable. We've obviously set out in the report a position where we think they are acceptable in this case. And we do think there's a, a, a good design here. And I think even think it's an improvement to what's there already and that's obviously in the report I've attached a couple of photographs just just so members can see the existing building at the end of the day though chair it comes down to a judgment and that's obviously a judgment the committee need need to make today thank you very much is there anybody else wants to uh, participate yeah I'd just like to concur it is oh, I sorry, think it is sorry, a... smell. yeah sorry yeah uh, I, I think it is indeed, as, as Peter says, it's a, it's a matter of judgment. Uh, in my view, this is just too aggressively modern to fit, even as a feature at the at the rear of the houses in in, in Pathhead. Right. I must admit, uh, when I looked at the photographs, and <laughs> I have to say, what's there at the moment isn't actually. That, no. that, and I think you agree with that as well, Councillor Smale. It's yeah, actually yes, fine, yes. It's, what it's, you're saying it's, is find, find a, an in-between way. So what you do, you want to, what you, you're saying is you want to maybe refer it back with certain conditions, is that rather than outline no? I, th I think what we're after here is a redesign with more tra with more traditional appearance and materials co that are congruent with the village of, uh, of Pathhead. Okay, right. I'll hold that just now because I've just seen Councillor Russell's hand uh, pop up. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Um... When I first came on the council, uh, I was fortunate enough, fortunate enough to represent uh, New Battle Path Head. So I know quite a lot of the historic buildings and the architecture up there, and I was always proud to represent that area. And so I do understand and agree with uh, what has been proposed that they should look at it again, because I think it would, I'm looking through some of the replies back as well. And you know there is there is issues among you know local residents there, and I think we should take on board some of those. But I think asking the architect to go away and look at it again, I would certainly um, I, I agree with that. Thank you. And I know it's no my word now, but I thought I'd put my two pence worth in. Well, you're a member of the committee, Councillor Russell. You have every right to participate. Isn't that right, Councillor Hackett? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, <laughs> Councillor Mulligan. Yeah, th thanks, dear. Having listened to, 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 to Peter, uh, or both Peters, to be honest with you, I think it does just come down to a, a, a matter of judgment. And the thing that's with me is Peter Arnsdorf saying that, that the guidance allows you to use the more traditional uh, um, approach. Uh, and I think both Peters are agreeing. It's just a matter, I think it's merely a matter of taste and a, a matter of opinion. It's a matter of taste. The, the, the applicants went to considerable uh, efforts and considerable costs, I would imagine. To, to, to get this here, quite simply, um, to reject this because what one person thinks something's nice, and I've got to be honest, I don't normally think whatever planners thinks nice is nice. Uh, uh, <laughs> however, I'm, I'm, I'm going to move the report, Russell, and, and the, the recommendations uh, um, to grant as, as by the officers. Okay, right, thanks, Councillor Mulligan. Um, is there anybody else co coming in just now? Councillor Hackett? Thank you, Chair. Um, I'm quite torn on this one. I tend to agree with a lot of the points that uh, Derek was saying there. When it comes to a matter of taste, um, I can't, in my own mind, I, I don't think I feel I can oppose my taste on that, and it's uh, down to offer uh, recommendations, but I am moved by some of the comments that Councillor Smale and uh, Russell have made. I'm just wondering if there's uh, a medium here um, you know, Peter's talking about being willing to approve subject to some conditions. I'm just wondering, um, with it being more traditional uh, material, I'm wondering so what the process of that would be or, you know, 
how long would that take? What sort of burden would that be on the applicant? Peter Ransdorf. Yeah, thank you, Chair. I mean, if you're looking at a situation where the committee would prefer a more pastiche or traditional design to, to the proposed works, then I think the position you'd have to take is you'd have to refuse this application. I would then have to say to the, the agents, look, the, the committee aren't against the principle of, of what you're trying to achieve here. They just want to change the design emphasis. But I, I think I think it'd be such a radical change you're looking for that to, to defer it for some sort of a modification. I, I think there's a, a big gap between what they're proposing and what I think certainly Councillor Smell is suggesting. So I, I think you'd have to, to look to refuse it. The, the other thing for me, Chair, if I can, is, is most of the discussions obviously been about the design of the extension, but I could also just do with a bit of clarity if there is concern about whether the issue is about the subdivision as well. Of course, you're subdividing one unit to create two as well. So I, I don't know whether the members are OK with that as well. Uh, I, I don't have a, an objection to subdivision because this was originally two cottages anyhow. Mm. OK, thank you. Councillor Johnson. Thank you. I am um, second on uh, Councillor Milligan's suggestion that we accept recommendations. OK, right, thanks. Right, Councillor Smale, are you moving then? Well, it have to be, from what Peter's saying, a refusal and the reasons why, and then if, it, if that is successful, then the agents will be told by our planners what you're looking for as opposed, you know, so that we're actually clear on what we're doing here. Yes, I, I think uh, to, to go ahead with this would be a un very unfortunate precedent for Pathhead generally. Uh, so I'm going to move that we refuse it, but uh, s respond to the architects and their clients saying that we've nothing against the principle uh, or, or the square footage or the access for, from the road. We might look at the cars, as I've mentioned, but the main thing is to have a redesign that's compatible with the village of Pathhead. OK, and I'm assuming from your comments, Councillor Russell, you're seconding that. Uh, yes, Chair, you certainly am, yeah. And then I've got, just to be clear, so that's that's the motion. The amendment, I take it, Councillor Milligan, you're moving is to, uh, is to endorse the report. Yeah, Chair, Chair, <clears throat> mine's is to grant, but uh, with the grant planning permission, yeah and conditions by, by the officers, given that the, the plan officers are saying that, that the architect have followed the guidance that's, that's laid down by the Scottish Government and, and this, that I think it's only right that we, that, that we move consent on this. OK, and that's seconded by Councillor Johnson. Yes? Right. Janet, it's over to you. Uh, there'll be just, to, well, I get my, myself correct here. The motion is to reject. The amendment is to approve. OK, um, do you want me to do it as a roll call vote? Yes, please. You'll have to excuse me if I mention somebody that's not present. Uh, Councillor Alexander. Um, I would move to allow. So that's amendment. That's For the amendment, yes. Um, Councillor Cassidy, no. Nope. Councillor Hackett. I'll uh, support the amendment. Councillor Hardy. Um, for the motion. Councillor Emery. Amendment. Councillor Johnston. Amendment. Councillor McCall. For the amendment. Councillor McKenzie. Good afternoon, everyone. Having joined late and missed the discussion, I don't think it'd be appropriate for me to vote at this time, so I would abstain. Okay. Good. Councillor Milligan. An amendment.
Councillor Muirhead. Amendment. Councillor Parry. Nope. Councillor Russell. For the motion. Councillor Smeal. For the motion. I think that's everyone. Sorry, I'll just confirm the numbers. I think that's seven for the amendment and three for the motion. OK, the amendment is therefore carried and the outcome of that is to grant planning permission. OK, and thanks everyone for your participation in that. Um, there's no private reports. The date of the next planning meeting is the 12th of October. For those uh, members that are on the LRB, it's my intention to have physical visits in the morning. I will not be changing the the, the hybrid model, i.e., in other words, you will those that don't want to go on a visit don't need to go on the visit. They can. We will still have the presentation by the officers regarding pho photographs or whatever it's called uh, in in the sense in the meeting. But for those that feel they want to go on site and have a a, a look see, then it's my intention that the morning of 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 the meeting, which is scheduled in our diaries at ten o'clock. We will then have uh, site visits and that will come out in the fullness of, of time. And uh, it's, as I say, it's up to each and, of, uh, each and every individual councillor that sits on the LRB whether they're comfortable to come on the site visits or participate uh, through the medium of Microsoft Teams in the afternoon. And it won't debar anybody as per the old rules, so to speak, that we had. But uh, I feel Unless unless something comes out from the First Minister, I feel that we are meeting, as long as we meet all the criteria, then there is no reason why we can't uh, meet uh, out on site. So I'll just leave you with that thought. If there's any problems, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going on holiday and I'm not going to be available. No, 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 actually, that's not true. I will, uh, uh, you know, if there's anything at all, then by all means, uh, speak to me. But, uh, as I say, it's just to let's let's get the ball rolling in, in, in some way. And as I say, it's up to each and every individual councillor to make that personal decision, which won't affect the discussion, debate and outcome of the LRB in the afternoon. And can I just thank you all for your attendance and uh, we'll, we'll see you. See you soon. Thanks. Thank you, Thanks, convener. Uh, Bye.